So let's start about who eToro is and what they're about. They are an absolute mega giant of a broker over here in Europe and they are about to launch stock trading in the US, which I feel will be the biggest game changer for this company. And I have to say myself, as somebody who has worked in finance for over 15 years, eToro are going about it the right way. They are regulated in many different jurisdictions and they are expanding at the right pace, making sure all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed before they open in any jurisdiction. For example, they are regulated with the FCA over in the UK, SISEC over in Cyprus, they're regulated in Australia, and of course, they are on the FINRA website over in the US. As I said, US stock trading is coming very soon. However, the fact that they are taking their time over in the US before they launch stock trading over the last year or so is actually a good sign for me because they're making sure they don't have a scenario where they leave themselves open to lawsuits or they mess up with regulation. It seems every second week, Robin Hood has some court case or some big complaint they have to deal with. We have crypto brokers like Binance over in the UK facing serious trouble with the FCA and the regulation there. It seems that eToro are taking the right steps first before they launch, making sure that the clients are in the safest possible position and they don't leave themselves open. I have to say, this is a great sign for a modern day brokerage with an app, unlike the old traditional Saxo Bank and interactive brokers, a modern day commission free platform, more on that later, going the right steps, making sure that all the I's are dotted, all the T's are crossed before they open in any area they are actually working in. This shows me that eToro is looking to stick around for the long term and they have clear aims of growing to be one of the biggest brokerages in the world. Now the minimum amount needed to open an account does vary on where you are located. On screen now you can see the minimums available, but if you are from the US or the UK, the minimum to open an account is actually $10 and a lot of other countries, it's only $50. So you can go ahead, check this link, it'll be in the description, and see how much it costs to open an account with eToro in your jurisdiction. Now, like I said, eToro is a commission-free brokerage, but of course, brokers want to make money. So how the hell do they do that? Well, the first obvious fee is if you take money out of your account, there's a five bucks fee. But to be honest, that probably gets wrapped up in transaction fees and eToro probably doesn't see that much of it. The way they make their money is on something called a spread. If you go onto most brokers these days, unless you're getting charged a flat rate, you will see that when you buy a stock and when you sell a stock, there's a little difference in between. Usually it's just a very small fee and that is called the spread. That is the fee that eToro will potentially keep on this trade. That's how they make money because they are not charging you a commission to open the trade. They're just opening the trade at a slightly higher price. And the easiest way of describing this is if you bought, say, Apple in this example on screen now, and then you instantly put it into your portfolio, you will see a slight loss on this trade, week one, day one, minute one, second one, and that percentage loss is how much it costs you to open that trade. Or you can even actually go and see the dollar fee of how much it roughly costs you to open said trade. However, after using this platform for a long time, when you close the trade as well, there is a slight difference. And what happens here is eToro tends to calculate the difference and that is how much they've made. I have tracked this for a long time and seen that when I actually do close a trade, quite a lot of the time, the fee that I get charged is a lot less than the initial fee that I had for opening the trade itself. But this is the normal standard structure these days for a lot of brokers that offer commission-free trades. If you don't want to pay a spread, you can go and open an interactive brokers account, a Saxo bank account, or some of the other more advanced platforms, and you will get charged a fixed fee per trade. But for me personally, I think for newer investors especially, this is a much cheaper way of doing things. Now, what does eToro have to offer? Well, they offer stocks, ETFs, cryptocurrency, CFDs, more on that in just a second, copy trading, and many, many more assets like commodities and foreign exchange or currencies. But having a platform that allows you to trade multiple sectors is definitely beneficial. For example, you can short Bitcoin and go long silver. You could also short the Japanese yen and go long into gold. There is many different aspects available with this platform. And I feel in the modern day world we live in, currency, commodities, things of the sort are definitely more needed in brokerage houses, especially for the new investor. However, I did mention CFDs there, which is a contract for difference. These are basically contracts the brokerage or other institutions can offer a client to buy a company. Usually, it's a way of having a lot more leverage without actually owning any of the stock. You are owning a contract with said institution. Now, CFDs are actually not available to people in the US 
US, but they are available to people over in Europe and in the UK. But I have to say, given the scariness of leverage and more than 60% of people trading CFDs lose money, I just completely stay away from CFDs, especially if you are a newer or intermediate investor. And on that as well, just stay away from leverage. It's not really good for your portfolio. Now, before we move on to the two most popular things with eToro and things that people tend to love the most, we need to talk about the stocks, ETFs and commodities. Now, this is the biggest problem eToro has, in my opinion, and they are looking at changing this very, very soon. In fact, I believe it's one of their biggest goals for 2022. Now, although eToro tends to have most of the stocks that you want to trade or ETFs, they don't have them all. They are adding them at a relatively slow rate. They do not want to add every penny stock under the sun that no one's actually trading. Like I said, they make their money on the spread. So the more people trading a stock, the more money they make. If they added in a low cap penny stock that only one person's trading every single day, they're not gonna make that much money. So they are only adding stocks that they feel are A, beneficial and B, well, less risky. I actually see this as a bit of a positive for new investors, although for somebody like myself who's had a lot more experience, it is quite annoying that some of the stocks that I do want to trade or at least look at are not on the platform. Now that said, I have spoken to eToro on this and they have promised me that a lot more stocks at record volumes are going to be added this year. So by the time this video comes out, it might not even be that relevant. But I'm sure if you are an eToro user and watching this, it can be annoying that maybe one out of 10 stocks is actually not available on the platform. So let's hope eToro watches this video and it changes very, very soon. Now, the two most popular things on eToro is the social platform and the popular investing program, aka copy trading. Now, starting with the social media platform, if you did not know, eToro is basically a social media platform that just so happens to allow you to buy and sell stocks. When you open your account, if you have it made public, and you can keep it private if you don't want to share your investments and returns, if you have it public, you can then go and comment on other people's portfolios, performance, and also on said stocks or investments. Each person and each investment actually has its own page. You can go on there, you can type whatever you want, people can interact with you, and you have this sort of whole community of investors. So for example, if you were a Tesla fanboy, you can go on a Tesla's page, make some friends, maybe meet up and go out for a nice seafood dinner. But the point here is this social sort of aspect of trading has become very, very popular over the last decade or so. It's also a great way of finding what other investors who may be more experienced or more knowledgeable than you on a said investment talk about what they think and what is going to happen in the future. It's a good way of sort of finding ideas to investing or even finding a red flag you never thought of before. It's a great way of feeling sort of part of a community and I feel like the more I use eToro, the more I take advantage of this aspect. And if you want to know more on the social aspect and how to use the platform, check out that video up there and you will see my thoughts and thesis, some of the pros and also some tips on how to use the platform more beneficially. Now the other part which is very popular is the popular investing program or copy trade. If you are a popular investor like myself, you can actually get copied by other investors. Now, what that means is, let's say you just open an account and you don't have any time, or you really like what somebody is posting about Tesla or any other stock. You can actually go and see their portfolio, see their returns, see their thoughts and thesis, see what they're saying on their personal page. And if you like what they're saying, or you don't have the time, you can actually allocate a set amount of money to them and when they buy a trade, you buy a trade with the percentage amount you have allocated to them. When they make a sale, it's the same. You're basically buying an ETF of that person. Now this investor program is great for people who really are new investors and don't know exactly what to do. But I have to stress here that it can be quite dangerous because you are entrusting a complete stranger to manage your money. So I would say if you are gonna go this route, do a lot of research, find somebody you like, somebody who meets up with your goals and follow them that way and then allocate some money. That's how I would look at this. I do think it's very popular, hence the name popular investor program, but I do want to sort of stress here, don't just go and copy somebody for the sake of copying them because they used a lot of leverage and got 100% in one month by buying Bitcoin. A thing to check here if you are looking at copying someone is check out how they performed in the last little correction we had in 2020. We've had a crazy bull run over the last couple of years, so pretty much every portfolio should be doing quite well. And you need to match that portfolio up with a sector that they are mainly looking at, see if they outperformed or underperformed 
when the markets took a turn for the worst. That's something that personally I would do as a sort of safeguard to make sure the person I'm copying knows what they're doing. And I promise you there is a lot of good investors on eToro that are definitely worth a copy just there's also a lot of bad ones too. Now, some of the benefits you get from using eToro other than the Discord that I mentioned earlier by using the pinned comment down below are what you get in terms of rewards for the size of your account. For example, if your portfolio is worth over 5,000 US dollars, you are considered silver tier. And what that means is you get many benefits like you see on screen now, such as live webinars where other investors are gonna go live, give you their live thoughts and thesis on a set investing subject. If you have over 10K, you can get weekly analysis. And if you have 25K, you can get a Wall Street Journal subscription for absolutely free research tools and Delta Pro Investment Tracker. Now this is actually some great features and I know these accounts may seem expensive to some people, but as you use eToro more and more and you invest more and more over time, which everybody should be allocating every single month to grow their own wealth, then you will eventually move up on the tiers. For me personally, I use the Wall Street Journal pretty much every single day and I get it for absolutely free because of eToro. The Delta Pro Tracker is pretty good too and I would recommend taking advantage of these features. After all, it's free and it does show one key thing from eToro. It's not there to make a quick buck. It wants investors to grow their learning journey. It wants them to become better investors, otherwise they wouldn't be putting on webinars so that you can become a more knowledgeable investor. They want investors to stay with them for the long term and grow their wealth over time. And I have to say, well done to eToro here, and it's refreshing to see that there is a broker out there not looking to make a quick buck. So to summarize the bad points and the good points, starting with the bad points, if eToro does want to compete with Robinhood and other brokers, it needs to add a lot more investments. It needs to add a lot more stocks. And once they take care of this problem, really there isn't that much bad about the broker. The other thing that is a problem, but it's a problem across all brokers is leverage. Leverage is very easy to use on eToro and leverage in general, I think in the market, is just a bad thing, especially for new investors. So be very careful with any broker if you're using leverage. But they're really the only bad points I can look at. The rest would really be down to user faults and user problems where they're not researching a said stock. Other than that, I think eToro's pretty good. And some of the good points really to summarize again are the fact that they're regulated and they're really dotting the I's and crossing the T's when it comes to regulation to make sure that investors are protected. Their social platform is a great place to find new investment ideas and interact with other people who may have a disagreeing opinion with you and make sure it confirms your bias or maybe even goes against your bias. It's a good safety net tool. The fees themselves are relatively low in terms of the rest of the brokers in the market. It's very competitive. And also I have to state that their platform is very clean and very easy to use. And the big one for me is the benefits you get as you grow your account with them, such as the Wall Street Journal. So my personal recommendation, obviously you don't have to listen to it, I'm just a bloke with a beard on the internet, would be go and give it a go. After all, the minimums are very, very low. You haven't really got that much to lose and you could find a broker and a platform you absolutely love. And if you did, again, use the link down on the pinned comment, you can sign up give it a go, and if you don't like it, you can close the account and you still will have access to our Discord. Now, if you want to know more on eToro, I have a playlist here, which is basically the opening the account all the way down to making a trade. And if you want to know more on copy trading, there's another video here. Now, if you are watching it this far, do drop the code word down below, which would be what country are you watching from? Drop that down in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like on the way out. Thanks very much for watching and all the best for your investing in 2022. Take care, God bless, peace.